welcome to another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. We're lucky today to have with us Rob from Boss Hogs Barbecue on Instagram. And he also has a business that he is starting up very shortly, which we will talk about in depth on the show. Now, not only does he have a wealth of experience on cooking on lots of different types of barbecues, but so much so so but so much so that he's starting up his own business and has been sourcing lots of different barbecues for us to go and buy in Milton Keynes. Without much further ado, here's Rob. Hello, Rob. Thank you so much for joining us on the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. How are you? Very well, thank you. Glad to be on. Thank you you so much. Yeah, I'm very good after a week's holiday to relax and everything. So I apologise for last week and what you guys had to endure. I'm sure the Sizzle Show were quite good. I apologise for whatever Owen said. How are you, Owen? (laughs) Yeah, I'm still recovering from it, to be honest. Uh, (laughs) No, it was uh, was a good crack, actually, to to talk to James and and Cork Barbecue. So, um, yeah, it was good fun. And obviously glad to have you back, Dan. You know, I, I almost missed you. Yeah, I almost missed you too. But um, I, I'm so excited to have you on, Rob, because um, when I originally started really following Barbecue on Instagram uh, about sort of a year ago, um, yours was one of the first pages I actually started following. Thank um, you. And when we actually originally launched this podcast, you were one of the people I wanted to make sure that we reached out to. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, could you talk us through your Instagram and what you're about and what you've been doing? Yeah, so like most people, really, um, I started the barbecue Instagram about a year ago during the lockdown and everything. Um, Always had a love for food, a weird obsession with America. So barbecue and food kind of went together. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I started started the Instagram um, just as a little project, really, just keep me sane through lockdown. And it grew from there, really. Started working with a couple of companies. getting more and more likes, more traction on it all, started growing more of a passion for it. And then we are where we are now. (laughs) (laughs) So what is the name of your Instagram for anyone? Uh, It's Boss Hogs Barbecue. And what I love is the versatility of what you're doing on there. So for anyone who hasn't yet been on there and go, go, in fact, pause this and go straight on there and have a quick look before we keep going. But you have a number of different barbecues and you cook all different types of cuisine. Uh, for example, recently you've gone from doing burgers on lives with uh, Will from Will's Grill Shack, but then also before that you did an Asian pork steak, which I loved. Um, so you talk about your obsession with American food, but you do everything on the barbecue. How, how does that all work? Um, it kind of, it, well, it all spanned from the American side of things. And then, um, a lot of it comes from looking at other people's Instagrams, um, scrolling through it every day, like everyone else does. And you just see things, I need, I want to try that. And I just, instead of doing the same old thing, the American barbecue, the ribs, the burgers, all that sort of stuff, it was, I now want to start trying to do other things and pork chops and things like that are quite underrated, I think. Mm -hmm. So love the, the Chinese pork chops and all that sort of stuff. I also think that classic British barbecue people fall into the trap of thinking that if I'm having a barbecue, it needs to be the same sort of things, but also yeah. not experimenting with yeah. those different things, not just with flavors, but how they cook them as well, which is something that you do in very different ways, depending on what you're using as your cooking equipment. Yeah, exactly. So I also saw um, recently that you, uh, on an Instagram live that you were doing with, with Will's Grill Shack, that you weren't actually cooking meat at all. You were, you're doing a bit of baking, it seems. <laughs> yeah, again, it's it's showing the versatility of barbecues. Um, it's just you can do anything in them. And um, again, that was another inspiration from Instagram. Um, had a go at a peach cobbler, uh, cherry, cherry cobbler. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's just so easy. Everyone um, assumes that barbecue is difficult and... It's a lot to learn, but that was on a pellet grill. Same as setting in the oven, leave it, forget it, enjoy it afterwards. What uh, what pellet grill have you... Uh, I mean, we're going to go on to your actual setups and stuff in a minute, but which um, which brand of uh, pellet grill have you got? Uh, that was on the Broil King Regal 500. <sighs> nice. so quite, quite, a, quite a nice big pellet grill. 
we've heard a lot of things about the Broil Kings and a pellet grill is something that Owen and I have talked about uh, before on the show because there's a lot that you can do with a pellet grill. For example, you talked about kind of being a bit like an oven, but you still get all of the great smokiness and depending on the different ones, you've got all the Wi-Fi bits and pieces that you can do with it but also the different choices and the ease of a pellet grill compared to some of the other items opens doors for you as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I, I always used to be along the mindset, charcoal or nothing. Um, but then actually using a pellet grill, especially around family, like I've got a three-year-old. So having that ability to still do big cuts like briskets, beef ribs, all that sort of stuff, but not have to worry about temperature control and all that sort of thing they're they're brilliant bits of kit very helpful and if you've got a busy and lifestyle it, then they're, they're they're perfect and have you found any differences you know between say doing a, a brisket or some sh you know short ribs the actual um textures or taste that you get from a, a pellet grill in comparison to if you were putting them on an offset smoker or a water smoker or anything like that um i think you, you'll always have that charcoal taste from charcoal you, you're not going to be able to replicate that on a on a different grill like a pellet grill um and things like bark are slightly crispier on charcoal and that sort of thing well it depends on how you cook it really but um there, there's definitely a difference neither of them are, are worse in any way they, they're just they're good in their own ways and using a pellet grill i imagine is it, I don't want to use the word easier, but more achievable to get the really moist briskets as well? Because you, you talked about the bark not being as crispy. Do you find that if you're using the pellet grill because you've got extra temperature control, it's easier to keep the moisture in things like briskets and longer cooks? Um, yeah, I think so. I think the, the method between cooking on charcoal and cooking with the pellet, the, with the actual brisket itself, is it, it's the same. So as long as you apply that to the pellet grill you then not worrying about temperature control you keep that consistent temperature that keeps makes them tender and all that sort of stuff so obviously we, we, we've kind of gone straight into to talking about your, your grills um so do you want to talk one thing we like to find out um really just how jealous you can make us um <laughs> about what what your setups are so what what is your grill space what have you got um so currently at my house, I've got I've got two ugly drum smokers. I've got a forty-five barrel. I've got the Weber Master Touch. I've got a little barbie cook, um, portable barbecue, and I've got the Regal Pellet five hundred, the Broil King. But then I've also got a couple of cheaper units from the, like your your home base jobs. That I've got one at work. I've got a couple of parents. I've got a few spread around as well. <laughs> uh, that's a good tip for Owen. So Owen is slowly collecting a barbecue collection. I've still only got the one barbecue, but I'm hoping that my second arrives end of this week, uh, which will be a monolith Kamado, and I cannot nice. wait for it to arrive. Uh, but Owen has been running out of space with his <laughs> grill collection. So have you thought about keeping them elsewhere at other people's houses? Uh, no, but I think it's a good idea, Rob. And how far do you kind of, how far do you go around your family and friends network? Do you, are you just going to start putting one in every single one of your family and friends just in case? I mean, it, it started off as people asking to borrow them and then it, they've just ended up staying there. And I think, I, I mean, yeah, if I could get one at everyone's house, then it's a, a good excuse. <laughs> Keeps it under the radar when I get new ones. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I was going to say, with, with what you've got at home, you must be kind of getting to capacity around being able to actually move manoeuvre around all your barbecues. Um, yeah, it's kind of, you, you kind of walk into the shack and you, you're, you, you've got the centre position and that's it. It depends what you stand where, whatever grill you're using. Um, but we are in the process of moving house as well, so hopefully that means a bigger garden. <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed yeah exactly <clears throat> i'm at the, i'm at that stage now where i've got a little corner and i'm finding that i'm having to move stuff depending on which one i'm using yeah um and i think again what i saw from uh you and will yeah you know on, on instagram live he, he was cooking on a keg broken yep. keg i also have the same keg and they are very heavy to, to, to move. <laughs> but it's, you, at least, you know, with something like a master touch or something, they're on wheels, you can just get it out of the way. 
But yeah, uh, yeah, it's so frustrating. I'm having to try and lift like 50 kilo barbecues just so I can move <laughs> into something else. So yeah, f- feel your pain. Not ideal. <laughs> no. <laughs> The other thing that I love about your account as well is not just the setup you've got, but the amount of different accessories that you use. And you also talk through why people should have them, how much it makes them easier. Um, For example, I remember a while ago, I can't remember if it was a live or if it was a video that you'd put up as Instagram TV, where I think you'd just got, if you hadn't just got one of the drums, you just got one of the planches for the top of it that someone had done for you custom. And you started talking about the digital thermometer that you had, the laser thermometer, and the fact that you'd actually realized that with the plancher on, you could use the drums in more ways than one. And so you did two or three cooks on that drum using that thermometer to show the differences of what you could achieve using the same bit of equipment to cook different things. So what are the must-have accessories you think people should have? Um, Definitely a temperature probe, Mm -hmm. a thermopen or similar that sort of thing um and then I, th- I think to be honest you can use anything i don't think there's anything that's a necessity as long as you've got the fire and something to cook on and the want to do it you can you can use what's around you like a lot of people now are using just live fire cooking and stuff you don't mm-hmm. necessarily need the accessories to do all of that but it's fun the, the little it gizmos is, and gadgets is. aren't they <laughs> yeah it is yeah <laughs> We're, we're, we're a stickler for gadgets. We love gadgets. <laughs> we, we really do. I mean, I, I almost went out and got one of the um, laser thermometers so you can check much more easily kind of like the, the temperature, the actual grill is, and it's easier to check whether you're actually getting an accurate readout from the thermometer on the top of your kettle, particularly as mine is an, uh, not the strongest brand kettle and leaks heat all the time. And you're like, is that actually as hot as it says? Because I, I have no idea. Um, but hopefully the Kamado will stop that issue. But it's simple things like that, which I think can elevate a normal yeah. barbecue to, to the next level. So we got a, we have a lot of different types of listeners, people who are obsessed with barbecue, but also people who are new coming into it. What advice would you give someone who wants to take their barbecue from introduction to the next level? Um, I think I think the main thing is experiment. Don't be afraid. So I I I hadn't done a brisket for a very long time. I started the barbecue and, and the brisket was like the pinnacle. And that, that was almost, that it kind of puts you off doing it. You want to make sure it's right with such an expensive cut of meat. But I think the best thing is, is just to experiment. Just experiment, enjoy it. Um, you can do research, but you don't need to do a lot. Looking for Instagram and things like that. There's so much advice and things out there. Um, but yeah, just, just enjoy it. And don't cook to time. <laughs> Oh, that, it never that, works out. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. We've said it a few times, but that is definitely the biggest tip that I've learned. I think it should be if anyone buys a barbecue for the first time and it's suggested that they're going to use it a lot. So like a proper barbecue, as it were, not like a five pound disposable one. It should almost come on the front of the instructions. Cook to temperature. Yeah. <laughs> just just ignore the times. Exactly. Um Rob, I'm really excited that obviously you've said that you've started your account like a lot of people and and us too, you know, around a year or so just over ago. But you're now turning this, what is now a passion, into a career, right? You've got some exciting news to be shouting about. Yeah, so myself and Dan, who is MK Barbecue on Instagram, we've we've both been doing barbecue for the same amount of time, really. Um, and we spent enough time talking about it, talking to family about it. Um, if anyone ever wanted to know anything about the barbecue or where to buy one, they'd come to us. So, yeah, we decided that um, we'd open up our own shop. Um, but we're trying to make it, instead of somewhere where you just go and buy a barbecue, you want to make it a venue. Mm-hmm. So we want to give it we want to give it an authentic Texas feel, so very rustic and back to roots of barbecue not so much like a garden center nothing against those they 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 serve a purpose but um yeah we want to give a slightly different touch on the barbecue shopping experience and uh, create a venue really do some classes um 
live events, different different events, really. Fantastic. And how how is that going? Are you when are you hoping to? Because I've seen uh, again, I've seen you. You've got an account for that, and I've seen you posted some videos of your progress. When are you hoping to? You know, unveil the and unveil your your, your setup. We're hoping to open at the end of July. Um, unfortunately, I can't give exact dates yet because we're waiting on stock. I think across the whole of the UK, well, across everywhere, really. Everyone knows there's stock issues with everything. Um, so that at the minute is our biggest hold up. But yeah, we're aiming for the end of July, last week of July, for the big, big unveiling. And what, so, what are you uh, hoping to do around launch? Are you, are you kind of doing a big event? Are you going to do more of a soft launch and then build up or...? So we're hoping to do a a big open day. So we'll we'll get we've got a couple of um, burner units like demo barbecues. So hoping to get those fired up, get some food on, invite a load of people down, just people come and have a look, see the experience, and hopefully buy some barbecues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be the that'll be the main uh, aim, wouldn't it? Yeah. And and what are you? Because I think a, a lot of the garden centres, like you said. I mean, I've shopped plenty of times at garden centres for barbecues and accessories and charcoal for that matter. Uh, and like you said, they do serve a purpose. I think f the, bar uh, the barbecue uh, garden centres that I've gone to tend to first and foremost stock Weber. A lot of them yeah. are kind of, you know, Weber uh, world type places and, you know, some even got grill academies, etc. cetera, on onto them. Um, and Traeger seems to be, a, you know, another popular choice uh, around that and some of the more pizza ovens which are becoming obviously more popular are you kind of sticking to those types of brands within your shop or are you kind of expanding into it into other brands that are perhaps not as well known you know here in the UK yeah so initially when when we started looking at what to what to stock they, they, they are the first point of touch um so the traders and that like webers like you said but we've actually we're going to be working with ProQ Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We're going to be working with Kamado Kings, who are oh. a ceramic company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also working with Pit Boss, who do yeah. a, a wide range of different barbecues. They do combo grills, they do pellets, they do gas. Um, and they've got a load of new items they're going to bring out at the end of this year, hopefully. Um, we are also working with some local charcoal suppliers, Low Baltic, um, and potentially in the pipeline of looking at making our own stuff. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So are you, are you quite the engineer or uh, have you got someone else to look at that? <laughs> um, not so much me, but, but Dan, Dan's good on, he's good on SketchUp and things like that. Um, yeah. So we're, we're, we're toying with a few ideas at the minute. I'm so jealous because it must be yeah. exciting to sit there and go, what would my dream barbecue shop be? How can yeah. I create that for people? And I love the fact that you're thinking about like the ambience of the place and the feel. So it's more of an experience just than walking around because a lot of the barbecue shopping that I've done has had to be online for me to find different things and do more research. Um, that, that could be because I'm not looking hard enough locally, potentially, but um, particularly when I first started out walking around garden centers and things, like you said, I felt like, I had limited choices and I was also only hearing about one or two brands and saying they're the best things ever. And they could be, but without actually being able to look and research and feel and touch different things, it's hard to actually know if that's the right decision. Yeah. So it must be so fun looking out there and thinking, wow, one of those, one of those, one of those, one of those and setting it up. Um, what do I have to do to swap places with you? <laughs> well in the minute you can come and paint the shop because i'm the minute it's five o'clock starts in the morning to go and paint everything <laughs> wow and i, I I'm definitely know. i'm definitely a turn up after that's done <laughs> <laughs> so, so is this going to be your main venture then once it's up and running is this going to be your main port of call or are you doing other things as well um so funnily enough my my actual day job mm -hmm. the the boss is dan who i'm oh, okay. the business with <laughs> And the shack itself is next door to where he owns his business. Right. So I'll Very be, convenient. Uh, to begin with, I'll be doing both. Um, but yeah, if all things go well and hope how we plan to, then that will be my, my main venture. So what I'm um, hearing is Owen, 
you need to set up something <laughs> next door to where we are and then i can look after that <laughs> true i suppose technically you know you know i am your boss in our day job so it, it could almost be a, a mirror situation nice. so you've you've obviously mentioned events as well um so with that do you mean kind of catering events um or do you mean more like cookery school type classes or a bit of both or are you not allowed to say yet no a, a bit of both really i mean i've recently been doing a few catering events by myself um it'd be nice to get it to a point where we have staff to go and do that sort of thing so we can cater for people but um yeah also barbecue schools um more towards beginners because obviously it, it'd be myself doing it sort of thing mm -hmm. but um i did the um texas event at the london barbecue school mm -hmm. and i thought that sort of thing was brilliant um but there's nothing local i'm, I'm from milton Keynes, um and there's nothing around this area apart from going into london that offers that yeah. it's part of the reason we set up the shop really because the the closest shop to me is about a 40 minute drive and like 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 it's been said you, I, I prefer to go somewhere and see it and make sure it's the right thing yeah yeah and i mean i know that there's a shop that's recently opened in ipswich that i need to go to it's opened very recently in the sort of last month or so um but otherwise it's just garden centers around here and yeah. i mean for you owen so i live in ipswich no one lives in colchester and essex we're not that far away from each other but it's 25 minutes or so would you say like Alton's is maybe the closest proper barbecue place to you? Yeah, I'd say so. And, and that's South, what, a good 40 Essex. minutes? 40 yeah, minute drive? So uh, I definitely think you're doing the right thing. And there will be plenty of people who are interested in looking at something more local. I think it's a big mistake to think, well, you know, on Instagram, there is a barbecue community in the UK, but compared to like the whole of the UK population, it doesn't feel like that many people. But you know, yeah. as soon as something opens, people will flock there and look for something different and it'll get more people into the community as well, which can only be a great thing. Yeah, exactly. Have you thought about putting things like music on there as well? Are you thinking about doing those sorts of events? Yeah. I mean, at, at, at the minute with this being the first shop, we're kind of, we're limited on what we can do with space and outdoor space and that sort of thing. Um, but the, the plan is to eventually, well, if all things kick off, have something purpose built that we have we have as a venue and get people in cooking, do live events, music, festivals, barbecue competitions, the lot really. Well, I'm just putting it out there. We'd love to come to your first event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your first your first cookery class. So if you want to have us down, more than welcome. We'd, yeah, we'd love to come down. Um, again, some of those some of those uh, barbecues you were talking about is not you know stuff that i'm familiar with i, I mean I, you know i know pro q and um but yeah it would be great to see some some other barbecues so we've spoken about it but you've mentioned you're in milton Keynes. but what's the business going to be called so so our uh, our listeners can uh, actually know where to find you so the business will be called the shack um the website will be under buyabarbecue.com so nice and simple mm -hmm. and, how was um, that not taken already i know <laughs> that domain name is like perfect as soon as we saw it it was it was purchased and yeah. not for a lot of money either i was very surprised by that <laughs> um and on instagram it's the shack dot mk great i'm just impressed everyone, everyone give websites. them a follow yeah everyone <laughs> give them, but i can't believe that cause, uh, another classic one what you've done there is clever because being q classically theirs is like diy.com or something yeah but how has that not been taken that that is part of me likes to think that you guys were just joking about having a business then you googled that domain <laughs> and you went right we have to now <laughs> if that's available and we've thought about it it has to be done well we did kind of stumble across it to be fair we were we, we were searching around and Dan, I think Dan typed it in as a joke just to see what it would cost, and it was it was there, not used for very little money, and yeah, we jumped at the chance. It kind of <laughs> sealed the deal. <laughs> if if uh, if all else fails, you could probably sell that for a fortune in a couple yeah. of years. That that, that uh, <laughs> just sealed it for a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, oh look, it's really exciting, and I think um, the fact that you can turn a passion into a career um 
is 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 the dream for a lot of us yeah. and i think you know myself and dan included so a big yeah big well done for actually actually to make it Thank a you. reality um, we can't wait to come down and so one of the things that we like to do obviously we started to talk about the business side of of, of your barbecue journey uh, your grill space but what about your ultimate cook you know you've mentioned american food but what would be your ultimate barbecue meal would you say um I think for me, a lot of it is the experience. So I, I love Texas barbecue. So I think it would have to be a big, a big bris brisket, like a Snake River Farm brisket, um, some ribs, just a, a proper Texas platter, but cooked on an offset. An offset barbecue, a big like meal scale offset barbecue is the dream for me. And um, I think that that would be the ultimate plate. Proper Texas barbecue, slaw the lot. I don't think a lot of people would argue with that either. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned dream slaw. So other than slaw, what other sides would you do? Uh, pit beans, cornbread, more meat. <laughs> <laughs> a brisket. Meat with a side of meat. Yeah, brisket with a side of shorties. That's what you yeah, want, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> While we're on the topic of brisket, and I mean, you're someone who knows enough about barbecues that you're opening your own shop selling them. What tips would you give people when cooking a brisket? You've already talked about the fact that it, it's quite daunting. What are the three most important things when cooking a brisket that people should consider? Um, number one, again, is don't cook for time. Don't plan it for a meal, because even if it's the next day, it ain't going to work. <laughs> Um, I think the best thing is just to go with it, um, go by how you want the bark to look rather than going to temperature, like it reaching 165 internal, then wrapping it and all that sort of stuff. Go by look, then wrap and then by fill. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, briskets can be daunting, but they are, they are quite forgiving, um, a lot of people say you can overdo it, but I, the ones I've done have been quite forgiving. Mm -hmm. So I think, firstly, look at the bark and then by feel, as long as it's tender and all that sort of thing. I think what I, people are most scared of, personally, is sometimes you can feel a brisket and you can think, right, that doesn't feel tender. But how do I know if that means I've gone too far or not far enough? <laughs> what, what tricks have you got for that? Um meat probe <laughs> yeah yeah if all Just else meat, meat probe it um <laughs> i i think if you if you put to pick it up in in the in the wrap you, you would know if you've gone too far mm -hmm. it needs to have a jiggle and not not just fall to one side sort of thing are you uh are you butcher's paper or foil uh butcher paper I've, 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 that's that. just because what I've done. I've never. I've not tried it with foil. I'm not saying it's better or or worse, but I've just never tried it with foil. Yeah, I need to uh, try. One it of the things, Dan. On. Uh, one of the things I think to add, to add on to those three points that you've made, Rob, is with brisket because it could potentially be you know minimum sometimes ten to twelve hours, sometimes going even you know even longer than that. You have to enjoy the process. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a chore. So if you mm. if you're not prepared to enjoy that that time that you're cooking and then the, the kind of TLC that you do need to give it across those potentially up to 18 24 hours um I don't think I don't think you'll probably do brisket ever again no no exactly I mean I kind of went when my first brisket cook I kind of went all in I, I did an overnight cook mm -hmm. I thought this is going to be a long cook so I'll do an overnight cook it's a good excuse to stay up and drink uh, <laughs> um so yeah, I did, I did it as an overnight cook and it enjoyed the experience, really. That's, that's, that was the main thing, like you say. You have to enjoy the experience. That's it. Well, I'm actually cooking brisket for Dan this weekend. Nice. And uh, I'm already planning a kind of... We're actually recording again on Friday night. You're coming around on Saturday, so I'm pretty much looking doing a staying up overnight. And like you said, just having a couple of beers on my own, yeah. sitting outside in the garden. 
cooking at midnight, two o'clock in the morning, whatever it's going to be. And then yeah, I'll, I'll turn up 12 hours later and scrape him off the <laughs> <laughs> off the garden wall where he's passed out from having too many drinks and then we'll, we'll get something served up. Um, but I think I that's think... how you measure it. That's how you measure it's done, isn't it? The amount yeah. of beers you drink. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen a few memes like that going around, didn't I? <laughs> I, I really want to take my brisket to the next level. And I think I've had probably three or four that I've been really happy with. Uh, one that was much better than the others and one that I wasn't happy with. But weirdly, the rest of the people with me preferred than some of my others. I felt it was too dry. But okay. um, what I need, what I think to take me to the next level is I think I've been using two small cuts of brisket. Okay. I think a certain size helps a lot with retaining the moisture and things. And because there's only myself, my wife and my daughter, and we've had the current situation with the pandemic that everyone's had to deal with, I've not wanted to do a huge brisket. So they've yeah. always been quite small. Um, so I think a larger cut of meat, but also once you actually do proper research, it's very easy to look at certain online butchers and go, right, I'll just get a brisket from them. But if you look at someone like Tom Hickston, for example, they'll give you literally different types of briskets, whether they're like USD, whether they're Australian, whether they're Wagyu, and also like the different things to, to look at. Do you have a certain type of meat that you'd like to buy from somewhere? Do you look for certain things when buying brisket meat? Um, not really. I mean, the, I've, Two most recent ones have been the from John Davison's, the UMI, the Uruguay ones. So I haven't been near them. I haven't been near them at all. I've only tried Village Butchers and Stilton Butchers. Okay. And I haven't really had a bad cook. Like I said, the one I was most disappointed with actually got the best reception from people who'd also had the other briskets. Okay. Which it must be down to personal preference. But I've never been able to achieve what you sometimes see online. I think one of them was yours, where you can literally unwrap it, give it a slight poke, and the whole thing jiggles like jelly. How do you tend to rest yours? Um, well, this is the thing. I don't have anything like a Yeti or anything. So okay. I, I, I tend to take it off, check it, and then I've, I'll keep it in the foil it's in, and then I'll wrap it with two or three tea towels, and then I'll put it in like... I've got one of the like Tesco's or Asda like freezer bags that you yep. can buy. So I stick it in there to try and keep it as calm as possible and without losing too much of the heat. But I don't know okay. if that's right. <laughs> that's me experimenting effectively. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the main thing is to experiment. Something I learned off of um, artists actually and something they do out in Texas. So I use butch paper mm -hmm. and then you take it off, you let it rest in, in the kitchen or on the side. Um, and it, I think you drop, so working in Fahrenheit, it, drop it down to, I think it's about 160 degrees internal mm -hmm. and then wrap it in cling film. So it's like a nice sealed package and then put it in the oven. Wow. Okay. Put it in the oven on the lowest setting you can. So it's about, I think it's about 50 degrees C on most ovens, but rest it in the oven until you're ready to cook and then take it out and slice. So a whole temperature, it stays moist. It's what they do in Texas. So most Texas place, uh, Texas joints have warming cabinets. Wow! You're essentially, I did not using know that. your oven as a warming cabinet. Yeah, That's a great that tip. Great tip. Um, the other thing is how long to rest it because you, you read some stuff. An American, some Americans will say you rest it as long as you cook it. So it's like. 12 13 14 hours <laughs> not longer um I, I think i tend to rest it for at least three hours but again yeah. i that's more because i'm then hungry and i cannot wait any longer <laughs> i don't know if that's right or wrong i kind of know that i need to leave it as long as possible but i struggle any more than three hours i i, I don't personally notice any difference i mean the last one i did i, I rested for six hours in the oven Mm -hmm. And I've rested some for, like you say, three hours and they've all come out well. I've rested some for just two hours and they were fine. Yeah. They were down good to me. So, On the 20th to the 22nd of August, the UK's largest barbecue festival will be hitting Colchester for three days of all things grilling, music and family fun. And if that wasn't enough, the British Barbecue Open Championships will be held there, where teams will compete in numerous rounds of barbecue classics for the panel of judges to crown the best British barbecue team. To find out more and get your tickets, visit smokeandfirefestival.com slash tickets. We can't wait to see you there. Kind of moving on from brisket, 
I wanted to, one of the things that we really hold dear on the podcast is to actually celebrate fails. So the things that don't make the social media accounts, some of the things that you don't necessarily tell your friends, but actually are an important part of the barbecue process. So please enlighten us, Rob. What, what, what's your bar- <laughs> Perhaps your latest one, unless you've got a whole reel of them, but what, what's, your, what's your barbecue fails you want to share with us? Um, the worst one, I think, for me was probably undercooked chicken when i was oh, yeah. first really starting to get into it my um my missus she's very particular about chicken as well so if anything's got a slight redness to it in chicken <laughs> even if it's a smoke ring or anything like that she's yeah. very nervous by it and yeah i i undercooked a chicken even though i was adamant that i cooked it correctly and all this sort of stuff I, I just I don't know how I did it. I just didn't temperature check it properly, and it came out that it shouldn't like it shouldn't have been like that. Yeah. I, I, did, I there, did anyone even that. did anyone even humour you and try it, or did you notice no. and just say, "Do not go anywhere near that"? <laughs> yeah, it was it sliced into it, and I immediately knew it shouldn't have been like that. And it was let's order something. <laughs> we'll get a takeaway. <laughs> it's. It's funny what you say about um, your other half and smoked chickens and things like smoke rings. The amount of conversations that I've had with my wife, because she, she's the same. I like, if you cut into it, you can see where the smoke ring is. There's no yeah. way the outside is going to be raw. It's, <laughs> it's, it's fine. Um, and again, working to like 75, stay alive is what I always do. But um, <laughs> my wife prefers like the chicken cooked like much further than that because i've had her say before this is this is too moist <laughs> like that, that that should be a compliment for someone yeah, yeah. cooking <laughs> chicken but I, I feel your pain there and that's the other thing i've learned about barbecuing is there are certain right things that you do for example we talked about the jiggling of briskets or making sure the chickens are cooked properly but everyone's tastes are different yeah and it's so hard to cater for everyone um but I, I've had a similar sort of fail uh, with that, which I've talked about before on here, where you probe it, you feel like it's right, it's showing up, and there must be some sort of heat leakage onto the thermometer. So when you actually cut it, it's not there. And then you hear about it for the rest of your life whenever you're cooking it for people. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I've, I've had that. And I always share my own uh, barbecue fails and one more recently, which Owen's enjoyed and it's not your normal type of barbecue fail. So around sort of March time, uh, when we were coming to the end of the first series, I knew I wanted a Camado and I knew that I wanted to buy uh, a new barbecue because I've just had a kettle for so long and Owen's got 43 different barbecues and it's been making me jealous. So I did loads and loads of research, like, three weeks of constantly online looking at different things and I decided to go for a monolith and I purchased it through a store which I, I won't say on here I've said it on other ones but I don't want them to be upset <laughs> um and I was told oh yeah yeah it'll be with you sort of 21st of April and then two weeks later I got told it'll be the 21st of May because we're having some issues as I like, completely understand what you're saying it's now the 7th of July <laughs> and I've received part of the order, but not the barbecue itself. <laughs> um, so the one thing you need to rest longer is that a brisket is a barbecue. But, you know, there's a lot going on in the world. So I've decided to be calm about it and just just accept it because certain things you cut, you have no control over. Yeah. But it's you just won't get like this at the else. shack. That's no, 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 you wouldn't exactly, get this at the right? shack. I wouldn't get this at the shack. <laughs> if if that boat on that canal had got stuck, Rob would have gone down there and prized it out of where it got stuck himself. <laughs> I would have, yeah. That, that, <laughs> that's essential travel in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> shall um, we um yeah. shall we do a bit of barbecue bingo? That sounds right. Sounds right. Great. It's my favourite part of the show. <laughs> uh to, to be fair. I um okay, so. I'm going to share my screen and we'll have the wheel that's got lots of ingredients. So we'll, we'll give that a spin, Rob, and whatever it lands on, if you could do a, a, a lovely cook for us. Uh, tag us in on, uh, on our uh, Instagram accounts. Uh, use the hashtag barbecue bingo and yep. then we will, uh, we will um, repost that for you. One of the things we do have on here as a choice is your signature dish. Okay. So... 
I mean, we've talked a lot about brisket. Does that mean brisket would be your signature dish or is there a, a, another dish that you would say is a signature for you? Uh, I think one of the things I do the most is probably a tomahawk serpenter. Nice. Right, there you go, straight hey. away. There we are. Okay, so is there anything that you can see on here that you think, oh, definitely not for me or... Um. <laughs> we've had a previous guest who's been allergic to peanuts and we put peanut butter on there so if there's something you can't have tell us <laughs> uh, no it, it, it all looks good there's more i'm swaying towards certain things but okay right well let's give it a spin and see what you get hey <laughs> see, do, do you know what that's that's the first time your signature dish has actually come up in all the that. weeks and weeks and weeks that we've had it on there. Very right, happy so, with that one. So, so, sorry, remind us what it was. Uh, so, I, I normally do a tomahawk surf and turf, but any any type of surf and turf is probably the thing I get asked to do the most. Well, fantastic. Something that we're doing in this episode as well is uh, we've partnered up for season two of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast with the Smoke and Fire Festival uh, in Colchester, which is um, in August. Uh, please do visit their website, give them a Google, give them a search on Instagram. It's an amazing event, the UK's biggest barbecue festival, effectively. Uh, but we actually have some tickets to give away. Uh, they've been kind enough to give us um, a few. Owen knows the ins and outs, and I'm sure he'll do like a mini rundown of the small print if he wants. <laughs> yeah, so basically we've got a set of four tickets to give away for a day of, uh, day of your choosing. So it's Friday the 20th, Saturday the 21st, or Sunday the 22nd. Um, so what, we, what we'd like to do is, obviously, Rob has just had his barbecue uh, bingo challenge, so what we'd like everyone to do, and we'll post about this on our social media as well, is for you guys to have your own barbecue bingo challenge, uh, ideally perhaps using even what Rob's ingredients are, so a, a, a surf and turf, um, post using the barbecue bingo challenge uh, hashtag, and Rob is actually going to be a judge for us. So when uh, we'll give a week after the, the, the launch of this episode on the 21st of July, so by the end of that week, Rob is going to very kindly pick the winner for us and you'll win yourself some tickets to the Smoke and Fire Festival. So yeah, the normal hashtag we use is hashtag barbecue bingo. That's hashtag barbecue bingo. And you can do what Rob's done. Or if you want to listen to the back catalogue of uh, episodes, we won't be upset if anything will enjoy that. Um, and, and pick one of the barbecue bingos um, and have a crack at it. And we'd love to see what you do. And the best one Rob's going to pick. So happy cooking, everyone. How do you feel about uh, yeah doing a little uh, judging session for us, Rob? I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to what people um, come up with. I think some of the favourites that we've had so far, I'm really interested to see what you do. And I love the fact that your signature dish, when we've spoken to a few other people, they've gone brisket, smash burgers, but yours is quite different. And I like that. But um, we've had marmalade as one yep. of the barbecue bingos. That was that was great. We had haggis as another, which I think Jürgen did from Culinary Demons, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, we also had 256 did a chocolate cake as well. So... Nice. There has been some different things. If people look back and decide to pick one of them, Rob's going to pick his favourite. Looking forward to it. Great stuff. Um, we've, we've spent a lot of time asking you questions, Rob. Um, we regularly get asked kind of, you know, what about our journey, our setup and things like that. But is there anything else that perhaps you wanted to bring up um that's worth kind of either a that's happening in the community or anything specific for me and dan that you wanted to chat about or anything that you're looking forward to that's upcoming in the, in the barbecue scene uh, put me on the spot now <laughs> yeah sorry about that <laughs> it's, it's more fun if we put you on the spot rather than have something prepared. <laughs> um no i think it, i think it's good that all these the festivals are starting to come up, like you say, the smoke and fire one. I've never personally been to that, so it's nice to see that the festivals are starting to open up. Um, hopefully, there'll be some at the shack soon. <laughs> um, 
what what is it you guys are looking forward to coming with things opening up now with barbecue and everything and meeting people again so for, for i'll go first so for me you're right uh the festivals for sure i think obviously this community has grown a lot over the last 14 15 months but uh, a lot of us have never met each other mm. uh so it's going to be a great opportunity to to meet a lot of people that you regularly you know have contact with or or uh you know like their content etc vice versa so that for me is going to be great and you know there are obviously the smoke and fire festival in colchester um we're also going to be attending the sizzle fest with the sizzle show guys um who's obviously our, our last guests so that's going to be really exciting and i think in going into 2021 there's going to be so much more events happening yeah. uh, which is going to be great um for us just actually being able to perhaps do some po uh, rec podcast recording in person mm -hmm. um uh, again you know the wonders of technology that we can do this anywhere in the world but again actually i think sometimes just getting people in a room and being able to do that so that's going to be quite good um so that yes they're, they're the main things and not just the festivals but like you said uh if more people get into the barbecue scene more shacks open up you know more barbecue shops um none in milton Keynes. no more <laughs> milton Keynes. <laughs> none, none, none in milton Keynes. um but also things like you know there's been quite a lot of um small business uh, like seasoning companies that have started up as well over the last 12 months. So I think just more kind of, yeah, enterprise happening yeah. around UK barbecue is, is what's really exciting for me, I think. Mine's a lot more selfish. So I'm looking forward <laughs> to, well, that, that's who I am. Um, I'm looking forward <laughs> to be able to cook for more people and do larger cooks. As I've said, it can be quite difficult to think, right, I'm going to do a huge Jacob's Ladder for myself and my wife and my four-year-olds knowing that my four-year-old's probably not going to touch it at all and my wife's going to have two slices to be like i'm done and then i'm left with like three or four kilos i'm like right here we go guys impressive time <laughs> um so i'm looking forward to that um but it, it does fall into kind of the festivals open back up but i'm really excited to go out and taste more people's food mm -hmm. And being able to watch in the flesh other people cooking and being able to see different techniques and the way that different people achieve different flavors, tastes, smells with different equipment actually in person, because there's only so much you can get from a video. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you can get everything you need from a podcast. Otherwise, why would you be here? But, um, <laughs> but for example, the Smoke and Fire Festival, they have competitions going on there and they also have live almost call them cook-alongs but you, you watch and you learn as people do it and being able to see that in the flesh and being able to see it properly and smell it and i think that's going to help take my cooking game up to the next level and i'm really looking forward to be able to do that and have a beer with other people while doing it yeah nice. what about you rob anything else outside of obviously your own business that you're launching in the festivals no i think i think it's the same really like like you say we've, we've spent most of the year or over a year now talking to people on on instagram as a platform it, it's now going to be good to actually meet up with those people and trade ideas and different techniques and stuff like that and try this different food that you've seen online and all these pop-ups as well that are now opening up and everything definitely well it's been an absolute pleasure having you on um we wish you the best of luck with the shack Thank you. Uh, and we can't wait for that to open. You're actually not that far from us. I think it's about an hour and a half. So we'll definitely you know. be there. We'll definitely <laughs> come down. We'll More than welcome to pop down. down, yeah. So just, I suppose, one final time, give yourself a plug. Tell people where they can find you and your business. Yeah, so the my Instagram is Boss Hogs Barbecue. Um, and the business one is the shack.mk um, on Instagram. There will be a YouTube channel and a few other different outlets as well. And we're based in Milton Keynes. Perfect. It's as easy as that. Google it, guys. <laughs> Go there. <laughs> Great. Thanks very much, Rob. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much for, for coming me. on. Thanks for having <laughs> me. So that's it for another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. It was an absolute pleasure to have Rob on the show. Uh, really looking forward to going down and seeing the shack in Milton Keynes and uh, seeing all these new barbecues, some of which I've, I've not heard of before. So looking forward to that. Um, as we said, 
this week and this episode, we are running a competition with our partners, the Smoke and Fire Festival. So the uh, our barbecue bingo challenge, please check it out on Instagram using the hashtag barbecue bingo. Please make a cook yourself from either what Rob got or any of our previous uh, barbecue bingo challenges from any of the other episodes. And Rob will be choosing the winner and you can win yourself tickets to the Smoke and Fire Festival in Colchester, the 20th to the 22nd of August. And as usual, if you are watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Um, if you're following us on your favorite podcast app, please like and subscribe. And if you're on our website, you can leave a review. But as always, we want to hear from you. We want to know what you want us to talk about on the podcast, what's important for you in barbecue. So please do get in contact with us either through the website, meetandgreetbarbecuepodcast.com or through our Instagram channels. You can direct message us, Facebook, Twitter, either way, any of the channels, we want to hear from you. So check out Smoke and Fire Festival, who are our season two partners, Boss Hog Barbecue, and until next week, keep on grilling.